is going on guys today we're going to be doing like a walk around um, review kind of video of the 2016 kawasaki brute force 300 uh it's actually my first atv that i've ever gotten like personally and like owned personally um it's a lot of fun i mean i loved it for the most part um i mean it's been great i have had a couple of uh issues as you can probably see if you look right here the bar is bent, but that's because I rolled it. You can see also right here the plastics don't line up. This doesn't come down all the way. So, yeah, I mean, the bars are slightly bent from that. If you haven't seen that video, it's on my channel. Just go check that out. It uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. That was, I think, actually after I had it one year. But, um, yeah, so anyway, let's get started. We'll start with the front and move our way to the back. Well, first thing is, I guess, looks. I mean, it's a great looking bike. The black with the lime green, I love. I love the shocks. They're nice and green. They're a little bit dusty right now. Sorry about that. I haven't cleaned the bike off in a while, and I probably should. But, uh, I mean, the styling, I mean, look at the, I mean, it just looks so great with the black and that green. Um, you know, you got your two headlights up here. You can mount some fog lights if you really wanted to. You, have, you know, Kawasaki logo, this plastic. You got your bar right up here. Your bump guard, brush guard, whatever you want to call it, front rack. You have your storage compartment up here, which is very nice. I have goggles and gloves in here, as, far, uh, as well as some nylon ties, because you never know when you could use those. Uh, I usually keep my phone in here whenever I'm riding, too. It's waterproof. It's I mean, it's great. This box is awesome. And then it just latches down with these two little rubber things. Never had any issues with those. Up here you have your... 12 volt outlet cigarette light or whatever you want to call it you have um you know your well i guess yes yeah, steering is next i guess i mean you come up here you have your brakes you have your back brake right here you have your front brake up here you got your throttle your parking brake okay let's let's take a minute to talk about this guys this thing sucks i'm just gonna say that right at like right out of the gate this parking brake mechanism just sucks okay because i'll show you why I mean, it's just like a cable, as you can see in there. But what that cable does is you come down here and it just pulls this cable right here and pulls that lever. And all it does is turn this bolt so it pushes the piston here in the caliper so that way the pads engage on your rotor. And you will constantly have to... Yeah, it's even loose right now. But you'll constantly have to tight, loosen this up and tighten the bolt back in once you know as your brake pads wear down and the problem is usually whenever you tighten it your pads slightly rub which that makes them wear out prematurely so I that's why um, a couple of months ago maybe a month or two I had to replace my pads and I didn't realize it and I actually jacked up my rotor too and that had a bunch of lines in it you know because it was metal on metal I mean it's terrible so I do not like the parking brake. You know, we fixed the rotor and the pads. We simply popped this wheel off and that was a quick and easy fix. But it cost me, I think, $113. It was 72, I think, for the, um, the, uh, the rotor. And then it was like 32 for the, um, just the pads or something like that. I mean, it was, like, the pads weren't that bad, but it was the rotor which killed me. You have... So here you have your lights, you have like running light, here I'll show you. So you turn the key to the light, you have the lights all the way down, you have like just some kind of, you know, just lamps, I mean you're really not that bright. And then you have your low beams and your high beams which don't actually like come on until your bike is, like the engine is running. You have a kill switch, reverse override, you choke, I think I already said that. Uh, with the, what's nice is whenever you have uh, high beams you can see your blue high beam light indicator comes on right there. That's really nice. You have also, you have a, uh, like your uh, gear indicator, you have neutral. Once you're in high, there's no light. But once you're in low, the yellow light comes on up here. And then reverse, your red light comes on up there. And like I said, neutral is green. You got your gas tank right here. You got your shift, you have low, high, neutral, and reverse. You have a cup holder, which I've used plenty of times. It's amazing how a little 300 could have this, but the, uh, Outlander 570 that we have doesn't have one and that thing cost about about two grand more Like I mean, I, I honestly really like this. I know it's a small thing, but it's really nice You have really nice full footboards 
so you you know you don't get rocks or whatever coming up through here and hitting your feet. You have your foot brake. You have your you know shifter lever right there. You have your fuel. You have on, off, and reserve. You just twist it and it will uh, you know go to whichever you put it on. You have you know some decent wheels. The back ones are you know wider than the front, of course. But the problem is they're a little bit like round. They're not very like knobby, so you don't get the best grip. So then sometimes you will get stuck in kind of awkward situations where you really didn't think you'd get stuck. But they're, I mean, they're really, I mean, they're nice tires. They let you, I mean, they let you slide around a little bit, which is really nice because, I mean, who doesn't like that? This is another thing that's really nice. You have a recoil backup, you know, in case your starter or your battery's dead, you could just pull start it. All you have to do is flip your key on and then give it a pull and it'll start right up. And it's nice that it locks into place once you get back down there, so that way no water or anything will get in there and jack up with that. Moving to the back, I mean the back just looks great. I mean you have your two lights, I mean that just looks very clean. Again you have your candy lime green shock, you have your muffler, the exhaust note is really good, I'm going to show you guys that here in a second. We put this on the tow ball it's really nice to hook up to whenever you're stuck or pulling someone out. Uh, then we have your vent for your um, differential, axle, blah, 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 your brake caliper. It has one disc in the rear, two discs in the front. I mean, but I mean, you really only need, you know, three. I mean, you don't need anything too special. The one thing I will admit is kind of, does kind of suck, but for a I mean a 300 you're not really expecting it is that this doesn't have independent rear suspension it has just the swing arm but I mean it does great I mean I have this back shock is in the full soft position because they're uh, five way adjustable and then these front ones come from the factory one notch away from full soft and I just left them up there because I don't want to be you know like dipping down too much in the turns where I risk rolling over uh, this up here, I know you're probably wondering why this looks all weird and leaky. I have a little bit of an oil leak up there, but I was going to put some silicone onto this bolt and, you know, put it back in and it should fix that real quick. No big deal. Uh, the seat will pop that off real quick for you guys. Sorry, it's a little dusty down here. You have your battery cover, your fuse box, right, you have your battery you have your positive cover, you have your fuse box, you have your air box in here. My air filter is fairly clean, I just cleaned it maybe two months ago. I mean it's really nice, easy to get to. Your air intake as far as like how high you can go into water without um, like you know flooding your engine or drowning your bike is right about here I'd say. So don't really go above this sticker or else you're kind of screwed. I mean, you can get a snorkel if you really want to. Personally, I want it's just a 300. I don't really need a snorkel. I'm not doing anything crazy. But, I mean, it's a good bike. It runs real nice. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I really can't ask for anything more than this. I mean, it sounds great. It runs great. It's a lot of fun. It's got plenty of torque on the low end. So whenever you start it up, and you're, you know, just sitting there, you can floor it, and this thing will take off. Uh, I don't know if you can see that right now, but I have 705.6 miles on my odometer. And they've been the best 705 miles of my life. They've been so much fun, guys. I love this bike. It's, it's great. Here, I'll uh, let you listen to it a little bit. I mean, it sounds great. I mean, listen to that exhaust. Now, that sounds just awesome. nice and quiet when you're idling. I mean, it's not, you know, loud or anything. I mean, you rev it a little bit and you... I mean, it sounds super good. It's a lot of fun, guys. I really love this bike. I mean, I, I really can't say that enough. It's, it's a great, great bike. Kawasaki, you guys did amazing with this. The one thing I do not like is this parking brake. I mean, just go back to the old-fashioned where you have the, uh, like the little clip up here, you pull back your brake lever and then you like, you know, put something down that's like spring activated and then it just locks your 
handle back like do that that's what the can am has um i mean it, it works great i don't see what why you wouldn't do that i mean this this just gets loose after maybe like two or three uses and then all of a sudden you don't have a parking brake that's also what i use those nylon ties for actually i literally just put one around the uh handlebars and i carry some cutters in that box and that's that's my parking brake situation so i mean i guess that's just about it guys i mean there's really nothing to it it's just a little 300 but boy is it a lot of fun honestly i'd i'd give it a 9 out of 10 i mean it's it's a great bike it's a lot of fun i'm probably going to upgrade the tires once these wear down if i don't have another bike by then uh, I mean, and then the parking brake, of course, that's the other downside to it. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, this is a great bike. The 2016 Kawasaki Brute Force 300. It's just, I mean, it's phenomenal. There's no, there's not anything, like, in the 300 market, really, that you can buy that's as good of a machine as this. I mean, this has everything you could ask for in such a small, affordable package. I mean, it's great. It's so much fun. If you're just getting into four-wheelers, you know, this is, like I said, this is my first bike. If you're just getting into it and you really want something that's not going to, you know, be too fast, too powerful or anything to hurt you, but still a lot of fun, you have to go with this. I mean, there's nothing better, in my opinion. It's just amazing. The one thing I will say that Kawasaki might want to do, though, is make a, like, a mid-size bike. They have their 300 brute force and then they have their 750 brute force and there's just no in between so i mean if i'm going to upgrade from this to something else i don't want to get a 750 because one that's really expensive and i don't really have that kind of money right now but two i mean that's just so much power jumping up from a 300 to uh over double the cc's i mean that's just a huge huge difference so they need to make like a 450 or a 500. I mean, that that would make Kawasaki, in my opinion, the number one company on the market. Sorry, my these brake lights are sagging down a little bit. But, I mean, the bike's great. I'm loving it. Kawasaki, you guys did an awesome job with it. I'd give it a thumbs up. You know, like I said, probably 9 out of 10 if I were to, you know, rate it. I mean, it's great. I couldn't ask for anything more for just a little starter bike. It's it's great. So uh, if you guys want to learn more about the bike, you know, figure out everything it has, whatever you know, specs, go to Kawasaki's website and look it up. Because I mean, if you are looking into getting a starter bike or looking for a bike for your kid or your wife or I don't know, just someone to start out with riding four wheelers, definitely definitely get the Kawasaki Brute Force 300. It's it's just amazing. I can't say it enough, guys. I've loved this bike. It's just done everything we could have asked for, and it's it's just wonderful. I have the 700 miles. They've been great. Yeah, they've been a little bumpy. They've been a little muddy, but I mean, hey, it's fun. I oh, I just love this bike, guys. It's so just you get so much for your money if you buy this i mean for 300 cc getting as much as you get it's it's crazy so uh yeah guys if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up uh subscribe for more this bike i mean go check it out guys if you don't have one or you're looking to get into the four-wheeler market i mean you gotta go look at kawasaki and you know if you're hunting for four wheelers look at the kawasaki route force 300 this bike is just perfect in every way. I mean, you can't get better than this for a 300 for a starter. I mean, it's just, it's great. I mean, there's there's nothing better than Kawasaki, guys, I'm telling you. So, uh, like, subscribe. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Have an awesome day. Peace.